So we're going to talk about our takeaways. We are fortunate enough to uh, be members of Freedom Founders, and David always does a great job of bringing in keynote speakers that have a lot of not just real world experience, but experience from, you know, outside of the country as well. Yep. Plus we're uh, there at this meeting that uh, we are surrounded by other real estate investors that have a, a high level of competency in their particular field and market and geography. And we're blessed to be around those folks as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we, you know, we learn from each other. Uh, did you have anything you wanted to, you have a, a takeaway that uh, you might want to share or you want know, to just get into it and maybe think of some stuff? Well, no, I mean, you know, I, they brought in, and, and I'm mess up his last name, I'm sure. Was it Alistair? McDonald. McDonald. Okay. Alistair McDonald. Um, just the, the knowledge base that he has. So this gentleman, um, lived in uh, Zimbabwe. Was it Zimbabwe? Mm -hmm. I think it was Zimbabwe. Yeah, where they had the, the hyperinflation. So he went through that. And it was great to hear from someone who had firsthand account knowledge of what they had. And um, I'm not saying we're in hyperinflation. Right, no, I'm not saying that. They had 135% inflation. I mean, it was, and, you, know, you know, one of uh, one of the guys we work with, uh, Bill Mann, uh, he, uh, he tells me he keeps a... Uh, um, a couple billion dollar dollar a billion dollar bills from Zimbabwe as bookmarks yeah. as a reminder of what can happen. Um, his parents owned a business in Zimbabwe. And of course, he grew up working for his dad at the time, mm -hmm. and they would have to pay their employees twice in a day. Yep, because the value of the currency would go up that well, high in a day. They had to pay them uh, at lunch and then before they left. Well, and you, and you know, like they were also saying like when you ordered food, you didn't pay until, you know, you couldn't prepay for the food. Yeah. You'd have to wait until they got it. Cause by the time it got from the kitchen to, to you, it's probably already increased in price. I mean, we we're giggling about this, but that's what happens in a, in a lot of these mm -hmm. we'll call them uh, not as stable governments as we have here. Yeah in the West. Right. Yeah. Well, the, the biggest takeaway, you know, and one of the things that um, I think really personifies Alistair's brilliance is his ability to understand the mechanisms of people. Right. Because we can all talk inflationary numbers. We can talk hyperinflation, deflation, you know, whatever percentages we want, but it all boils down to the human element. Mm -hmm. And if you can understand people and understand why people do what they do, then you can start to hedge yourself against um, big events that can that can change like hyperinflation or or deflation. I mean, that's one of the things that he talked about was, you know, we're all talking, about, you know, everyone's talking about inflation. No one's talking about deflation. Right. That's yeah. yeah. So a little background on uh, Alistar. He, when he was 21, he was hired by National Geographic to work with one of their big um, article writers for National Geographic. And they were going to map this river from its beginning to, to its end. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we didn't have these commercial satellite uh, available that you could just take pictures yeah. at the time somebody actually had to you know ride the river and map it out and there were sections of this river in zimbabwe that no one had ever been to so it was never mapped out and you know people were asking him how, how could you possibly have the courage to go to the head of this river and ride it all the way down and go through these areas that no one had ever been to and have never mapped aren't, aren't you afraid of the unknown he goes well I have the skills to uh, navigate the unknown when it happens. And, and that, that was one of my takeaways is that you can get in any business or any endeavor, uh, you can get all the information you want, but there's always things that are going to change. When you look at these Navy SEALs and they plan and plan and plan, the first thing they will tell you is that 
the plan is thrown out the window as soon as the first shot's fired. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> because it changes. You cannot um, plan for your opponent's reaction. Uh, you know, in, no, in time of always. war, you can't uh, you can't plan for the unex uh, unexpected. Yep, and and you brought up a good point. And one of the things that I, I just I really hooked into was uh, when he was saying because we all talk about information and every, you know I don't know if you're going to touch on that, but um, we live in a in a world of just you know information information overload mm -hmm. and one of the th going yeah one of the things that he yeah one of the things that he was saying is information at its truest form is surprising or it has to have some element of surprise right because if it's known it's not information right. it's it's just it's the known and if it doesn't if it's not applicable then it's not information right so we we surround ourselves with all these different channels of influxes of information coming in and out and you know none of it's surprising you know and that's that's one of the things that he, you know we just said like you know everyone's talking about inflation no one's talking about deflation you know that would be indeed a surprise yeah no, absolutely. <laughs> you know if if things keep you know inflating or you know we have inflation that continues I don't know if that's really information. We already know it's happening. Right. That's, you know, okay, we inflation's not as higher now than it was two years ago. Who cares? You know, like two, you can't go back two years. We are where we are. So, and what would happen in a de deflation of assets would be, so we have this particular scenario, everything costs more and more and more, and then people stop buying it because you're only going to purchase stuff you have to have. Not mm -hmm. stuff you want, yeah. and eventually you're going to have assets that aren't a necessity, yeah, that are going to start going down in value because you don't have a market for it. Yep, yeah. and then that will translate into uh, other other parts of the economy. You would imagine when that happens, it would translate into higher interest rates. Well, you know, the problem with governments are if the interest rates go up, then the debt that they have exactly cost them so more. so uh, that's that that's the whole point. Like, because you know, one of the whole takeaways or one of the focal points, I guess, of of the last weekend was the seventies, right? You know, wh where we you know had that jump in interest rates, we had that deflation, mm -hmm. and um, you know, are we are we heading there now? And oh, by the way, the Saturday evening. Uh, we had a theme dinner and we all had to get it in our best seventies outfits, which was not a very good look on most of us. <laughs> well, you know, I, yeah, to, to jump back to what we were saying though, I mean, like I, we, we try to, we, we try to predict what's going to happen. We don't know. I imagine though, our government um, and the powers that be, we're, are not going to increase rates because that adversely affects our deficits. Yep. So where do we head? Do we go into negative interest rates? Well, do we do we take the course of uh, of Europe, of the European Union? Yeah. Well, see, that's also been tried and failed. But that, I don't put it past our government to try stuff that everybody else has failed because we're different. 